guys? Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. That's from a guy, he is 25 years old, and he's writing in looking for my help as well as you guys. There's going to be some definite audience participation today at the end of the video. Looking to find out if he made a mistake. You're going to see, guys, that he was with his girlfriend for six years, and the relationship abruptly ended a year ago when he refused to, to propose to his girl. You're going to see in his story that he, in his view, had a great relationship all those years and definitely thought he was going to marry her, but his career, school, then career came first. Purpose always comes first. She decided to go back to school for a couple more years to get a second bachelor's degree, which is dumb as hell, and met a new group of girls. And all of a sudden, her behavior started to change. You know what the heck was going on with her? She started tiptoeing around subjects like about her friend selling pictures online, about her friends having open relationship, open marriage, wanting to know his opinion on that. Lots of red flags. And then it's all, suddenly this big ultimatum she gave him. And he didn't cave to the ultimatum. And now he's looking back because she just abandoned him. They make the right choice. Now that would be a very, very good one to go over here, guys, to talk about red flags, trust in your gut, and you cannot cave to ultimatums. If your girl truly loves you, she's going to talk to you and communicate with you and work things out, not just say you're going to marry me or, or that's it, no, we're talking to you again, stuff like that. And anybody that pulls that type of crap along with the other things, that tells you everything you need to know. And this guy, you know, he he's done very well for himself at his young age, and I'm proud of him, but he's going through a tough time. And so he needs some reassurance from me, as well as all you guys, he made the right choice. And you're going to see more about that as I get into this story. So any of you guys that are relationship guys that have been through this crap before, ultimatums and stuff like that, maybe you've caved ultimatums and learned the hard way. Believe me, he could use your two cents in the comment section. Or you guys are in relationships right now, you can learn from his situation and others to not give in to the ultimatums and all that. So buckle up, this is a good one, and definitely help this guy out at the end of the video. He says, uh, hello SSM. I'm a longtime listener ever since I was in college. I've used your videos while I was studying, and now I do while commuting to work or when I'm hitting the gym. I found your videos on all three channels to be entertaining and a good way for your viewers to learn without actually experiencing the wild stories you tell. Well, that's the idea. Learn from other people's mistakes and problems and be entertained along the way. I'm writing you because I am currently going through something and I hope to get some perspective from you and your viewers. Sorry for any grammatical errors. English is not my first language. A little bit about myself. I'm 25 years old and the oldest of four siblings. My family moved to the USA when I was 12 years old because of my father's work. We moved a couple more times until we finally ended up in Texas. This is where I graduated from high school and college. I graduated in 2021 with a BS in mechanical engineering with a summa cum laude honors. Bro. That is awesome. Congratulations. You have worked very hard. I, I'm, your family should be so proud of you, and I'm sure they are. That's fantastic. In my senior year in high school, I began going out with Amanda, not her real name. I knew her since my sophomore year. We were both on my high school swim team. She was my first serious girlfriend, and we spent a lot of time together. However, even then, I knew how important it was to still have my own life, and so I didn't spend all my free time with her good. I don't know whether somebody told you that or you knew instinctively, but that is the right way to go, guys. So many guys get in relationships, and that first serious girl or any girl, they're really into, she's hot and all that, and the celebrities really give everything. They spend all their free time with her and stop hanging out with their bros. They stop doing their hobbies and interests, stop exercising, thinking that's what she wants. And then she ends up breaking up with them because he's boring and has no life. And the guy's thinking, well, that's what you said you want. So right here, he had it. they did their thing, they were together, but he had his own life doing his own thing. That's the way to go. The gals always come last, guys. I can't make that any more clear. Purpose is number one. Uh, after high school, I ended up getting accepted to one of the best engineering colleges in the state. One year later, Amanda graduated from high school, and she ended up going to the same college as I did. That's not an accident. She missed you, dude. So we did make the long-distance thing work for one year. I would visit her every now and then, but I always prioritize my grades. Good. Because that's your purpose. That's establishing yourself for your life. You can always have girls later. Always. What you do, guys, between probably 15 or 16 to your early to mid-20s will pretty much set the stage to where you go. Uh, nothing special happened during college. We both focused on our grades and went on dates. Uh, neither of us liked to drink or party. 
So our weekly date nights would involve watching a movie, trying new restaurants, <laughs> cheap ones, or walking around campus. It wasn't much, but we enjoy each other's company. Okay, so it sounds like you're both on the same page. Don't need a whole lot of craziness and excitement to make you happy. She's in the same school as you, so obviously you know where she is most of the time. I don't know about that first year while you're apart, but who knows? But right now, in college, in this story, they had a good thing going. Now to get into my situation. I began looking for jobs during my last semester in college, focusing on leadership engineering rotational programs. Basically, a company seeks engineering students slash graduates, and for a period of a two to three years, they, they send you to live in two to three different locations around the country. That's interesting. Usually, the company has some type of office or manufacturing facility in that location. This is done so the new hire gets out of their comfort zone, gains experience, and fast tracks into a leadership position in the company. I was offered and accepted a position for this type of program. Well, sweet, bro. If that's what you wanted, wonderful. Enter the situation with the girlfriend, huh? As for Amanda, she, she actually took some summer courses, so we both graduated at the same time. At this point, we have been dating for a little over four years, so the topic of marriage came up during that time. Of course it did. Now, at that time period, it looks like you're probably, I guess, about 22, 23, I guess, graduating college. You said she's a year younger, so she's 21 or 22. Uh, a bit early to be talking about marriage. Now, of course, a girl that's in love is going to be thinking about that type of stuff, but it doesn't mean you got to start moving towards it. You've demonstrated through your actions that you're obviously with her. There's nobody else, but you got to focus on your establishing yourself for where, you, where your life's going to go. <clears throat> I am a relationship guy and do plenty married at some point. We discussed the topic many times and we agreed on a lot of important things. Kids, jobs, relationship roles, and prenups. Oh, so she was on board with the prenups, huh? I also made it clear that even though I wanted to get married, I wanted to do it in my late 20s or early 30s. Yes, good for you, bro. There's no effing rush. Plenty of time to save up some money for an emergency fund, pay off any debts, work on any loans you may have, debts there, get some experience in the job, establish yourself, then you can freaking get married. No rush. Good for you. There was always a bit of tension around this. I knew she wanted to do it a bit earlier, but I was firm about my timeline. Good. You're standing your ground, as a man should. The second men start budging on what they want to do, that's when more and more BS happens. Always. So when the job offer came around, I talked to her to come up with a plan for the upcoming three years. She wanted to get another bachelor's degree from a different campus on our college. What she already has a bachelor's degree. Why does she need to get another one? This is the problem with this generation now. My gut tells me she was just trying to kill some time while you were going around the country or something like that. But if this is going to be your future wife, I'm assuming she didn't win the lottery. I'm assuming she didn't have family money to pay for it. So she'll probably be taking out loans for yet another bachelor's degree, which will then become your problem if you marry her. So, but this is ridiculous. What, the first bachelor's degree was enough to do what she wanted to do? And these idiots think that they're in entitled to have their loans paid back by taxpayers? You're fucking kidding me. Grow the fuck up. Anyway. It was close to her parents' home, so she would move back in with them. This bachelor's degree only took two years to complete, so while I was in my three-year program, she had pursued the degree. Waste of time and fucking money. This was going to be a big change in our relationship, but we believed that we could make it work. Yeah, believe is a key word here. During my first year, everything went smoothly. So you think. We talked on the phone every day to discuss school, work, and just to keep in touch. Depending on the time of the year, I would buy her an airplane ticket so she could come visit me or I would visit her. How about she buys her own freaking airline ticket? I'm assuming you didn't buy all of them. She can go to school another freaking two years. She can buy an occasional ticket. It all came crashing down in the second year. For my second location, I was actually sent to an office that was a three-hour drive from her home. So we were able to see each other much more often in person. And that's when things came crashing down. During this time, she started to get close with some of the girls who were pursuing her the same degree as her. Aha! New group of friends. 
This is when I began to notice some changes. Her demeanor didn't con completely change, but she began discussing some topics that raised some red flags. Oh, do tell. For example, one day she called me and talked about how one of her friends would sell fit pics over the internet. It would make around $250 a week from this. And then she would ask how I felt about it. Fit pictures. I'm guessing fitness pictures. That's, that's, all, that's all I can get out of this. But I would imagine that would turn into different type of pictures that would raise more money, etc., etc. Asking how you feel. Is she asking you how you feel about her friends doing it? Or asking how you feel that she would do that? But usually that's her testing the waters to see if she could do that. And this is not the girl that you've known. And mind you guys, this is all throughout college. They were together all the time. Did not, she didn't like to drink. They didn't like to party. They did inexpensive dates. You know, it was almost like they were married ahead of time. Now she's got a new group of girlfriends. Maybe she's now making up her lost time. But we're not done yet. Another example would be her discussing and how one of her old high school friends was in a, wait for it, open relationship. I've been a long time viewer of your channel, so I was able to spot the red flags. Every time something like that would happen, I would tell her that, that it's their life and they can do whatever they want. However, I also told her that those are the type of people I don't want to associate myself with. And if she wanted something different, similar to that, I would wish her luck and break up with her. Good for you. You knew darn well to nip that in the bud. But here's the problem. The very fact that she's bringing up the open relationships. Now, of course, she's not asking you if you want that. But she's making sure you're aware that her friend does it. And I'm sure she's probably selling you the idea how amazing it is and beneficial and blah, blah, blah. This is not the girl that you thought you knew. But we're not done yet, gentlemen, with the girl he thought he knew. Right, frankly, with these changes, I'd be seriously, I, I would be, well, knowing what I know, I've been like, you know what? Things aren't working out. Maybe we need to take a break. Oh, she freaks out. If she stops being the gal that you thought she was, you got no reason to continue the relationship. And I, what I tell you always about a girl, pay attention to a girl's friends. And did you meet these friends? Clearly, uh, you didn't like them. Uh, she would push back, but I would not budge. This surprised me. We've been together for almost six years at this point. She knows how I was raised, my beliefs and values, traditional Roman Catholic, so I have no idea why she wouldn't be able to at least understand my position around these topics. She understands your position. She's well aware of your position. She doesn't give a shit. It's all about her. And I'm sure her friends, are, her new friends, are egging her on. And I might add, women generally know darn well where their guys stand on various subjects, they're still going to test them, just like a little kid tests their parents. Kids know darn well they're not supposed to do this or this. They know the rules, but they're always going to test their parents to see what they get away with. You parents out there know exactly what I'm talking about. And I was once a kid, and I always tested my parents. And believe me, I learned not to test my dad especially. Yeah, I test my mom all the time. My dad, <laughs> no way. I get an ass whooping. That belt had, <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. Yeah, she knew, but she seen what she can get away with. How attached is this guy to me? What can I get away? What can I get him to change his stance on? <clears throat> I don't know what was happening, but these type of situations had me on high alert. Doesn't sound like a very good relationship to me, amigo. Uh, one day she called me. I picked up and greeted her, and she was a bit quiet. So I knew something was wrong. This is how the phone call went. Keep in mind, I was 24 years old at the time. He picks up the phone and says, uh, Is everything okay? And she says, Yeah. I need to talk to you about something. I said, what's going on? And she said, I want you to propose to me within the next two years. Just like that. Gee, honey, why? He said, uh, mm, okay, what is going on? Why are you asking this? Her, I want a yes or no. Ah, ultimatum, demands. On top of the whole tiptoeing around the open relationship thing, talking about her friends selling pictures online. This is not the girl you knew. Or this is, but you're seeing her true colors. Well, SSM, that was basically the discussion for the next 20 minutes. I would ask questions, trying to figure out why she was doing this. We would not, and uh, we would not answer my questions and would just then continue to say yes or no. So he kept trying to talk to her and she's like, yes or no. Acting like a bossy asshole. When women do this, they obviously see you as someone they can control and boss around. 
So all the, the time you spent with her communicated to her, you're not going anywhere. Therefore, she can pull this type of bullshit. She had, she's feeling confident enough she can give you an ultimatum and she'll get what she wants. So you being a relationship guy and being good to her, your kindness was mistaken for weakness and this is the bullshit you're getting. Well, as I said, I know, oh no, um, I missed a part. I told her if she wanted me to answer her question, she needed to give me time to consider it. She was a bit reluctant, but then agreed. We agreed to wait and not speak to each other until the end of the weekend. This was on a Friday. Well, guarantee she's going to call on Sunday or Monday. Yes or no? He says, well, SSM, I know that after this you would say leave her and don't look back. But I can't lie. I was completely caught off guard and I panicked. That's why she did it, to catch you off guard. Women are great at catching guys off guard. Notice, you ever notice, guys... How many times have you guys been, you're going out to dinner or someplace nice, and that in a public place, and that's when your girlfriend will drop the bomb on you about some big issue? Right there, so in her view, you can't get up and leave. Or ruin a perfectly good night, or you're about to watch the fucking game, and out she strolls in front of the TV, they're about to do kickoff. I want to talk. Catching you off guard. It's on purpose. This was completely out of character for her, and when she gave me her ultimatum, I knew how this would end. I loved her. We were together for almost six years. We had our ups and downs, but we built a relationship where we emphasized communication. I think the idea of arguing and fighting is pointless, so I would always want to resolve our issues with open dialogue. You want to act like an adult. You want to have good communication, be reasonable, all that. Again, a logical way of doing things. Well, guess what? She obviously wants drama. Men by and large, if they have been feminized, are about logic and, and order and uh, not being drama queens and all that. But women, they get caught up in the drama. And many love the drama. So I did feel betrayed when she pulled this stunt. I felt that in a situation where you both had a right to share a perspective, she had robbed my voice. Right. She's giving you a fucking ultimatum. She's not talking about it where you can discuss what brought this on. Here are the reasons I want to wait. Trying to talk like someone that actually loved you. She isn't behaving like someone that loves you. She's behaving like a fucking tyrant. Admiral General or General Admiral General, like the tyrant. Is that what it's called with Sasha Baron Cohen? Anyway. Leaving me with a choice where there was no real winner. There was another reason. During the phone call, I had a gut feeling. I was I was telling uh it was telling not to agree to this, and that was more than what she was leading on. I didn't know if it was her new friends or if it was something that she had been thinking about, but my gut told me something was wrong and I couldn't ignore it. Always listen to your gut, guys. I'm going to say this since day one. Your gut, is your, your gut feeling is, is your superpower. On Saturday, I talked to my friends and parents about the situation. They all knew, they all knew her, so they were shocked that she was pulling this ultimatum. Right. She's behaving totally out of character to the gal they thought they knew. To be honest, I already knew my answer, but I couldn't stop thinking of the reasons that would have pushed her to do something like this. Dude, it could have been a lot of things. She, in her mind, or maybe her friends convinced her that if you're not prepared to propose to her at, I guess she, you were 24, so you said, so she's younger, 23. At 23 years old, if you're not willing to make that commitment, then you must not love her. Maybe her friends put that idea in her head. That if you weren't willing to do that, then, you know, that whole, all that bull, bullshit. Or... Maybe there's another guy in the picture. A guy that obviously has expressed interest in her and I'd propose to you in a heartbeat, that type of thing, because she's probably talking to him about you. And her thinking, well, if this guy doesn't do it, I'm going to move on to the next guy. Or, I'm sorry to say, she was cheating on you. And maybe she got pregnant. Remember her talking about the open relationship thing? And if you would propose to her, then you get together, have a celebration, and you hook up and, ooh, I'm pregnant, and now you're taking care of this kid. You have to wonder these things. Something pushed on this ultimatum, this change in behavior. Or, this is who she was all along and she hit it very well. Believe me, it happens. Well, on that Saturday afternoon, she called, asking if I made up my mind. I told her that this was completely out of character and kept asking questions. She wouldn't answer anything. The only time that she gave me a straight answer was when I, I asked, is there another guy? She immediately said, no. And by the tone of her voice, I felt that she was telling the truth, but obviously I can't be sure. She then asked me, okay, tell me, why is, why is making you hesitant, what is making you hesitant to marry me? I said there were many uncertainties in the near future. 
For example, after the program, I'll be given a promotion in a new, more stable location. But the location was based on availability of the company. Uh, there is a one office as in, this, in, the, in the same city that she was in. I wanted to end up there. But if a position wasn't available after my time in the program, we would have to discuss if she would move with me or if I would look for a new job in the company. He says, side note, she lived in the same city in the same house all her life. So I knew it would be a lot for her to move with me to a new state. Well, you know what? Welcome to real life, where a lot of people pick up and move for jobs and things like that. And if you're obviously the main provider, then guess what? She's going to have to bend more ways than one. So I knew there would be a lot for her to move, blah, blah, blah. I said that there was still too much uncertainty regarding this topic, so do something like getting engaged before I knew I would end up was not a good idea. Again, in her mind, well, if you really love me, that wouldn't matter. I wanted to wait not because I wasn't sure about her, but because I wanted to be in a more stable position in my life before I started something new like marriage. Again, being very sensible. I also told her about my gut feeling and that she was hiding something. She was quiet for a while, uh huh, and then said out of nowhere, listen to this guys, you will always have a special place in my heart. And she hung up and we haven't spoken to each other ever since. Just like that. Like that. You told you have a gut feeling that something, she was hiding something, you'll have a special place in my heart and hung up on you, and that was it, and you haven't heard from her since, and this was like a year ago? Meanwhile, six years of your life with her? Bro, her actions have shown everything that I need to know, that she either the whole time was not the person you thought she was, or she's dramatically changed, something else is going on, like your gut told you, like another dude, maybe she's pregnant, I don't know what the fuck's going on, the friends were influencing her, but she's not the girl that you thought she was. And I'm sure this was heartbreaking. And who could blame you? But you dodged a big one. After she hung up, I was numb. I didn't feel anything. It wasn't until I returned from work the following morning that I was at the dinner table where I began to weep. I called my mom, told her what happened, and started telling everyone. And she started telling everything will be okay. And I'm so sorry, sweetie. This went on for a couple weeks until I finally stopped crying. Dude, no shame. You're 24. Six years of your life. A quarter of your life you're with this chick. And you really, you were, it sounded like you were very happy in your relationship. I thought you were going to marry her. And it's like, all that for this? And the way she just dropped you, like you meant nothing. Why the fuck would anybody want to be with someone like that? This is why I'm writing to you, SSM, in your community. After a couple of months after the breakup, I accepted that we were not getting back together or that I was never going to speak to her again. Bro, it's a blessing. Trust me. The only thing that still lingers is that gut feeling. That is the one thing that keeps me tied to the previous relationship. There'd be a period of weeks that I, would, I wouldn't think about her, but the feeling keeps coming up again. This leads me to keep thinking why she brought the ultimatum. I can't get closure. Every time I think I'm moving on, this feeling comes back and I get back to square one. Bro, in varying degrees I've been there, but you know what? I think closure is overrated. A lot of people in life don't get closure or the closure they want. But believe me, she closed the door on you completely. Even if you got closure, even if you found out that she was with another dude or got pregnant or who the hell knows what, well, would that really change anything? Her actions before you broke up and how she handled things and since, I mean, you haven't heard from her at all in a year. Did I make a mistake? No. Before that, before that our relationship was great. Not as great as you'd think, dude, because if it really was great, she wouldn't have treated you like that. She got her drama from reality TV, so she didn't bring any drama to the relationship. She respected my no guy friends rule and no girls nights out boundaries. I know I'm a relationship guy, so hearing your stories and the nightmares that some guys have gone through has made me worry to start dating. I'm scared that I won't find someone like Amanda. Dude, I don't want you to find someone like Amanda because Amanda is a B-I-T-C-H. Look how she treated you at the end. After all those years, after all the years you were good to her, loyal to her and all that, and that's... The ultimatums and t- little talks about open relationships, sharing pictures online, things like that. And then there's abrupt yes or no and then dropping you like a piece of garbage. I really hope you don't find someone like Amanda. I hope Amanda is in a bad relationship and suffering, frankly. Someone that agrees with a lot of my core beliefs. I was close with her family. Hell, when I visited her parents, they would let me stay in the guest house, guest bedroom. 
My parents had moved away during college. Our families even shared Thanksgiving dinner at one point. Everyone got along. In today's dating world, I'm afraid that I won't be able to find someone like that again, specifically with the cheater and liars that are filling up the dating scene. I'd appreciate any advice. Thank you, SSM. Bro, you did the right thing, and it was hard. But you you did what a lot of guys would not do. Most guys would cave. You know, they would, after like a week, call her back, cry and begging for her to take, take you back, and then she'd have all the power and would be even a bigger tyrant. You, you, a whole year, you didn't chase after her. Good for you. And you know what? At the end of the day, you, you, I guarantee you, whatever she's doing now and has been doing for the last year, in the back of her mind, she's like, he never chased after me. He never came after me. I'm willing to bet you she's going to reach out to you one day. When things don't work out with the guy that she's with right now, whether it is now or in five years, you're going to hear from her. I guarantee you. And she'll be begging and crying and pleading, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, blah, blah, blah. Don't take her back. You made the right choice. You cannot give in to an ultimatum. And there are all those red flags. When she was bringing up the fucking tiptoeing around the open relationship thing, saying her friend was doing that, combined with the whole talking about her friend selling pictures online, you put these all together, maybe she's gotten new, with a new group of girls and freaking went buck wild, who knows. But, I, you know, you did the right thing. So, And it's totally understandable for you to wonder what if. Who wouldn't do that after six years of your life? But you are now at the point in your life, 25 years old. I want you to dedicate all your time towards your grind, your purpose. You obviously have the job now, becoming great at it and establishing yourself. And if you're a good guy and you're obviously a good guy who stands by his convictions, you'll meet a chick one day if you're a relationship guy. But with the help of my channel and your own life experience, you'll be able to vet her very much. But then again, one can say, guys, he spent six years with codename Amanda and he thought he knew her and then boom. So... You just have to be careful. But I do think one day, because if it's what you want, you'll find your girl. But this goes to show you guys why you, you got to spend years getting to know her. And even then, there's no guarantee. But you can have relationships. But whether you want to get married or not, that's a whole different thing. So you made the right decision, bro. And I, I'm proud of you. I know this hasn't been easy. But you have to move on. You have to get past this I need closer shit. You know? Maybe it was another guy. I don't know. I mean, it's certainly possible. Or maybe this is who she was all along, waiting for her moment when she felt truly that you wouldn't go away. But there's a lot of lessons to be learned here. So guys, in the comments section, let this guy know he made the right decision with not uh, not not giving in to her ultimatum. Let him know he made the right choice, not chasing after her, and he's going to be okay. Really, he needs this, because I don't want him just to have a moment of panic. Because if you gave in to her ultimatum, you, your relationship would have been a living freaking hell. And I'm convinced there are other things going on there. No girl that loves their guy would behave in that way. And a lot of guys, a lot of relationships, marriages began because of ultimatums. And how well do you think they worked out? So, all right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think in the comment section. He does need our help. That's why I'm doing this video. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.